realized that I wanted to be a singer very early because practicing the piano and practicing violin was not appealing to me at all. But when I started to sing, ah, the world opened up for me. It was what I was born to do. My mother was taking voice lessons. She said, uh, oh, Marguerite, I'm going to take you to my lesson, and we'll learn to sing a duet. And I went to her lesson, and Mr. Ferdinand Dunkley, who was English, graduated from the Royal College of Music in London, was not a singer, but he was a wonderful teacher. And uh, he said to me, what are you going to do in the fall? I said, I'm going to Loyola, and I'll be in the Arts and Science Department. Oh, no, he said, you are going to the music school. <laughs> of course, after I graduated from Loyola, I went to LSU. They had a great opera department at LSU. And uh, I did my first opera there. I did La Boheme. Well, tell me about your debut at the Met. I was at the Metropolitan Opera in New York City, and the opera was Die Fledermaus, the Bat. It was in the old Met. They had vast dressing rooms, I mean, huge things, and one little bathroom on the end, and uh, I had used lots of Kleenex, and, you know, putting on the makeup and everything, and there's a pile of stuff there. Before Rosalinda comes on, it's about 10 minutes, so not quite that long. So I'm sitting there and I'm starting to oh, get a little itch, you know, nervous and say, you know what? I better get rid of all that Kleenex. I don't see any waste baskets around here. I know what I'm going to do. I'll put it in the toilet. So I took it all and I put it in the toilet. Oh, that's not going to go down. Oh, my God, I'm going to flood the place out. I'm going to burn that stuff. So I had some matches there, so I got the matches, and I put, I started to burn the, the Kleenex so that it would go down the toilet. I didn't realize the seat of the toilet was covered with celluloid, which is highly flammable. And the whole thing went whoosh, up in flames, and then knock on the door. Miss Piazza, you're on. And the publicity man came in. He said, oh my God. He takes his handkerchief and wets it. He said, good luck, Edgar. And off I went to make my debut. My Television was just really starting, you know, up. Max Liebman said, uh, Marguerite, I'm going to do this show. It's going to be an hour and a half. Uh, and there's nothing like it has ever been done. And we want you to be the singing star. From the International Theater on Broadway, your host, Snow Crop Marketers, makers of Snow Crop frozen fruits and vegetables, frozen fruit juice concentrates, and frozen coffee bring you the first half hour of your show of shows. And we did so many inventive things. And everything that you see on the television today is a copy of the show of shows. No question about it. It was a variety show. I sang opera. I sang straight pops. Uh, the Billy Williams Quartet did their pop thing. Uh, the dancers, the Hamilton Trio did dancing. And Sid did comedy. And Coca did comedy. And we had a ballet company that danced. We had every kind of uh, show business thing on the show of shows. When the show shows quit, I needed to do something else spectacular. And Raymond and I sat and we talked. We'll do a supper club act. And we said, we're going to go for broke. We're going to do an act. And so we put together musically an act. And we all picked the music, different. The first part is all Commedia dell'arte. 
And he goes, and I had a dancer who was superb. And then uh, all of a sudden, after 10 minutes of Italian commedia, I said, now I would like to sing some Cole Porter. The pianist slams down the piano thing cover. Miss Piazza. What? You can't sing Cole Porter. Not in that dress. Oh, I'll change. And I go into the pop stuff. And after that, I go into the whole Dixieland jazz thing. And the reviews were fantastic. Nobody had ever done anything like this, ever. I think of myself not only a singer, but I'm a communicator. I'm not just singing to sing some pretty notes. I want it to mean something. And I sing to the last person in the audience. And I am more at home in front of an audience than I am anywhere else. Now, there are those who don't know anything but uh, uh, rock and roll. That's too bad because that's only one facet on the diamond, and the diamond should have many facets. That's the way I always thought about the pop stuff I did. It put another facet on my life, my career, and every time there's another facet, it's more brilliant. <laughs>